This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Can you draw on a Chromebook? If you had asked me this two years ago, I would have said no, but things are changing. I've got two graphic tablets here. Both work with Chromebooks and I wanna know, are they any good? I've used some really expensive Chromebooks in the past, two of them in fact, and they both come with pens. The Google Pixel Book about two years ago and last year at CES before everything shut down, I got some hands-on time with their higher end Samsung Galaxy Chromebook Flex. Both of those came with pens. One was good to draw on, the other one, eh, not so much, but they were also both on the pricier side of things when we're talking about Chromebooks, which tend to be more inexpensive. And my thoughts in general were that if you're gonna spend that much money on a device and use it specifically for art as your primary art tool, you're probably better off going with like a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, S7 Plus, or maybe the more inexpensive Tab S6 Lite, which you can get for like $250 to $300. The other option when you get above that $500 price point is going with a low-end iPad and an Apple Pencil, which is also also a fantastic art tool. So it's not that I've ever had anything against Chromebooks specifically, it's just that I think there are better values out there when we're talking about art. However, a couple things have come out in the last few months that I think are starting to change that. XP Pen sent me their Deco Mini 7W, and I also picked up a One by Wacom. These are graphics tablets that have started supporting Chromebooks. And what's cool about these is they're relatively inexpensive. Each one is about $60. The other cool thing about this is Wacom is going to start supporting Chromebooks with some of their other devices, including some of their screen devices in the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if brands like XP Pen and Huion are not far behind. I'm still not sure Chromebooks are specifically the way to go when you're talking about art. However, if you already have a Chromebook because you got one for work or got one for school and you just want to draw on it, this might be a great option. I didn't have a Chromebook on hand myself, so I picked one up pretty cheap, something that would just get the job done. This is the Samsung Chromebook 4. It retails for around $300. Um... I don't like it. I guess it's not a bad Chromebook necessarily. It's just that I'm used to a higher screen quality. I think if you get an Android tablet from Samsung at that point, you're getting a really good device. So I was hoping for a little bit more here, but it gets the job done. So if you're watching this video, you're like, oh, that doesn't look so good. I hear you. I'm with you there. The screen does not film well. Now, both the XP Pen and the Wacom are graphics tablets. That means that you draw on them in front of you and the lines that you're drawing appear on the screen before you. And there is a little bit of a learning curve to this. It takes some time to build up that eye-hand coordination. Whereas if you're drawing directly on a screen, it's just easier, it's more fluid, it's, it's kind of how you're used to drawing in real life. So there are some trade-offs you are making when you go with these budget range devices. So with that said, let's get to the testing. But before we do that, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform, professional websites, online stores, portfolios. It's even easy to claim your own domain and URL. Create a custom site that matches your style, bring your ideas to life. I took it for a spin. I built my portfolio with it. And as a web designer back in the day, it would have taken me a week or two to do what I was able to do in an evening using Squarespace. If you're showing off your work to potential clients or trying to land a full-time job, those templates look really professional. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Domain. So the first of these devices I want to take a look at is this one. This is the one by Wacom. It's got the nice red back. It comes in two sizes. This is the smaller one. It comes in a medium size as well. The smaller one retails for about $60. There's another product Wacom has called the Wacom One. It has a screen, very, very similar name, kind of confusing, but this is the tablet one. What's really nice about this is with a lot of products with Windows or a Mac, you have to install the drivers, but this, you just plug in the USB and let me set it down here. And I don't know if you could see it, but the cursor is moving and we have the ability to use the cursor. So let me open up a drawing app. This is Clip Studio, which now runs an Android. This is a professional level app. It's really awesome, one of my favorites. And I could just come in here with my pen and I could just draw my lines. Now let's try slow angled lines. It's always a little hard to do on these tablets, but overall it looks pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit of wave, but overall I, I think it looks good. Pressure is good as well. So if I draw really light, I get a really light line. I'm gonna apply more pressure here. 
and my line gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And so overall, I feel like the pressure control I'm getting on this pen is really good. It's exactly what I would expect from Wacom, so that's really good. The other nice thing about having a Chromebook, at least in this app, is this is a pro level app, which means if you've got a keyboard attached, Control Z is gonna allow you to, you know, uh, undo. If I wanna increase my brush size, I got my key presses for that. If I wanna decrease that brush size, I can go in and hit the keys for that. So a lot of the stuff that you're used to on the desktop is available here. Now, the one thing I have noticed is when I've been playing with this a little bit is that from time to time, it does get a little bit glitchy. I'll see if I can get it to glitch out here. Aha, it glitched out a little bit on me there. I'm gonna zoom in and we'll see if we can see this. So one of the things that's been happening to me when I use these is that like I'll pick up my pen and it'll still drag along. And I don't know if you could see that I, I kind of hit the end of this line. And even though I picked my pen up, it brought that line with it. So there are some quirks that I'm finding to this. It's not horrible, it's not the end of the world, but it is something that I'm finding. Next up, I wanna test this. This is the XP Pen Mini 7W. This is the latest XP Pen tablet. This is their first one that works with Chromebooks, but I expect them to be adding this kind of functionality to many of their other tablets in the near future. Now, like the Wacom, there's no drivers needed. In fact, I found this was slightly less glitchy. I didn't really notice any glitches when I was using the XP Pen compared to the Wacom here. Let's get some fast lines going on. All of that looks good. Let's control Z this, get rid of some of these lines, and let's check out the pressure. So if I draw really lightly, oops, let me bring this over a little bit, really light. It's got good initial activation. I'll apply more. So yeah, overall the pressure feels good. I don't feel like it's blowing out at any point or anything. Let's draw some nice angled lines here. Those feel pretty good. Fast hatching lines. Honestly, I think I think I like this better than the Wacom. I didn't expect that, but I, I do really like this. I think the lines are tapering better on this than they are on the Wacom, and I'm not getting the pickup issue that I've seen on the Wacom. Now, one of the things I know that folks are gonna ask, and it's a good question, is how does this work in other applications? Like, yeah, Clip Studio is, is kind of expensive. There's a subscription to it. It's a great app, but what if I wanna use something inexpensive? Let's grab a brush here. Let's see, can I make this bigger? I don't think this uses keyboard shortcuts. This does use keyboard shortcuts, that's really nice. So this is Artflow. This is one of, this is kind of similar to Procreate on the iPad. Uh, it's a nice, fun app to draw with and this has some nice pressure sensitivity to it as well. So what I've found from all of the apps that I've been using here is that yes, everything that you would expect, most of the art apps, are gonna be using the pressure sensitivity and they are gonna be able to take advantage of everything that this tablet can do. And if you're wondering, hey, what other drawing apps are available for Android, I have a whole video on that, so I'll make sure that I uh, link that up above. I was surprised. I really did prefer the XP Pen to the Wacom tablet here. This is the first stab that both of these companies have taken towards developing something that work natively on Chromebooks. I think there are some pros and cons here. I think it's really nice that there are no drivers. You just plug it in, and it works, that's really nice. I'm so used to fighting with drivers whenever I'm installing a new graphics tablet. Of course, on the other side of things, th the cons here is I've always felt like Chromebooks aren't really the best thing to draw on, and the main reason why is you're using Android apps, and it's emulating the software for the Android apps. And because of that, sometimes they're laggy, sometimes they're glitchy, sometimes weird things happen in those apps that don't happen when you're using them natively on Android, which is why I said at the beginning of the video, if you're going down this route and you're not sure, should I get a Chromebook or should I get an Android tablet? I tend to think if your main focus is art, Android, iPad, even Windows, which is gonna be more expensive, is really the better way to go. But if you already have a Chromebook, this is a good option. Now, not only do we have tablets like this, but we're also getting some universal styluses that have started coming out over the last few months for Chromebooks. The downside of these is price. These tend to only work on Chromebooks with touchscreens, which tend to be the higher end Chromebooks, which tend to be more expensive, which tends to take me back to my original thought, which is really, if you're gonna invest that kind of money in a device, 
Chromebook isn't the way to go for art, but at the same time, I think is something that's worth looking into. So that's the state of illustration on Chromebooks. If you're just learning how to draw, you should definitely check out my second channel. I've got some really great art tutorials that start at the bare bones basics and build you up over time. And they're kind of fun and animated too. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.